Okay, think about your home. If someone took out a third of your belongings and the size of your home, could you maintain your lifestyle? Well, two men altered their lives to become minimalist, and they've written about it in a book they call Journey, their journey called Everything That Remains. Joshua Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus join me now. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having us. We two are childhood friends. Yeah, we've known each other since we were fat little fifth graders. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of climbed the corporate ladder together as well and, and sort of living the American dream. Yeah. You know, by age 27, I sort of had everything I ever wanted. And the big house with more bedrooms than inhabitants. You know, the average American house has more than 300,000 items in it. And I had a house full of stuff, but I also had the appliances, the clothes, the gadgets, the stuff in my life. But I realized that it wasn't making me very happy. There was a lot of discontent in my life. All these things I was buying yeah. to make me happy, they weren't doing their job. So I became a minimalist. I decided to pare down my life, and I got rid of about 90% of my stuff. 90%? <laughs> now, to be fair, <laughs> I, I was kind of a hoarder. Now everything oh, okay. I, I own, everything now, now that I own, it really adds value to my life. It serves a purpose or it brings me joy, and yeah. otherwise I got it out of the way. Was it the same for you? Yeah, it's funny. If you were to tell my 18-year-old self what my 28-year-old self was going to have, I would have been like the most excited 18-year-old. Like, wow, I'm going to be so happy when I'm 28 years old. Mm -hmm. But instead of happiness, I had stress. I had debt. I had a lot of discontent. I was working 60, 70, sometimes 80 hours a week to maintain that lifestyle. And it just really got to a point where I just had to, had to change my perspective. I had to do something different. Yeah, so Ryan, we have a picture of your closet before yes. and after. <laughs> Let's talk about the change. Uh. <laughs> okay, so the left is, there's, there's nothing in there. No, no, so th this, this, is when I, uh, this is when I did my packing party. So when I first was introduced to minimalism, I wanted to do something to really help change my perspective. So Josh and I came up with this crazy idea called a packing party where we decided to pack all my belongings as if I were moving. So Josh came over, literally helped me box up my towels, my clothes, my toiletries, uh -huh. my furniture, uh -huh. everything, literally, like I was moving. And then the idea was to unpack things day by day for three weeks to see what I was really using, what was really adding value. Mm. And at the end of 21 days, I had 80% of my stuff left in boxes and that was that was my huge revelation moment like wow here are all these things that I had worked so hard for over the last decade to make me happy and they weren't doing their job so I donated and I sold all of it and that's really where the minimalists.com started was with that 21 day packing party yeah so you're happy now with having less oh it's so much nicer to, I, the one thing about minimalism is I've been able to reclaim my time we have this idea that one day we're gonna be able to retire at 65 or maybe if we save really hard we can retire at 55 or yeah. even 50 yeah. and we can do the things we want to do but really by simplifying my life I've been able to do the things that I want to do now. Now, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Joshua, how's your life changed? I have really, really got back control of my finances. You know, I made really good money in the corporate world, but I spent even better money, mm. and that equation just doesn't work. So Isn't I had mass. I know, right? <laughs> I was trying to keep up with the Joneses or yeah. the Kardashians or the Trumps or whomever, and I realized that I was spending more than I was bringing in. I was living for a paycheck, but I wasn't really living at all, mm -hmm. and now I'm really living, and I really enjoy my life. Okay, so both of you you are single, is that right? Yes. So what yes. about if you get married and have children? How are you, you going to keep this up? You know, that was actually the, the <laughs> biggest part of this journey for me, because when I first discovered minimalism, I found this whole community of people. First, there was this really cool entrepreneur, single guy, and I'm like, oh, maybe it's just for these people. But then I found a guy like Leo Babauta, who has six kids. Mm. And he lives in the city in San Francisco, and he's a minimalist. And all these other people with different families, different work situations, people who live in houses in the suburbs. Yeah. And I realized there are all these different flavors of minimalism. Mm -hmm. What it's about is figuring out what items add value to your life so you can get all the clutter out of the way, make room for what's actually important. You have a book signing tonight? We do. We're at Quail Ridge Books at 7 o'clock, and uh, we'll be signing books. Ryan will talk for a bit. We'll give out some free hugs as well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love this idea. Thank you so much for coming by to share it with us. Thanks Absolutely. for having us. Thank you. You can find their book, Everything That Remains, at your local bookstore or online.